<laughs> We're happy to joke. My brother Joe is here uh, with us today from, uh, I'm going to get it wrong, Mopod. And I got it right. Yes. Nice. Yes. Uh, so um, as is the tradition, let's start. Uh, Joe, do you have a dad joke to share with us? A dad joke? I do. <laughs> I, I, man, my joke's usually cheesy, but considering I'm in the karaoke business and, uh, and all the other businesses I do, I, I, got, I got a few. All right. all right. Let's hear one. What's your best? All right. Uh, my wife told me to stop singing Wonderwall so much. And I said, maybe. <laughs> 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 oh, that's so good. Maybe. You're going to be the one that saves me. I love it. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I knew about Mopod. I knew about the CMO <laughs> stuff there. And I knew about your investor element. Right. But you just said karaoke business. Yeah. So I would love to hear about the karaoke business. I'll, yeah, that's... It is so much fun. It is a, it is incredible what we do. So over the pandemic, uh, we couldn't go out and do things like karaoke. And me and my business partner loved taking people out after conferences or events or meetings and, and you know, a couple of drinks, karaoke, everyone becomes friends. It's a, it's a fun, fun time. So we were sad that we couldn't do that over the pandemic. And we said, all right, let's just let's try something online. So we set up this Facebook group called Friday Night Karaoke uh, and just started inviting a few people. And there was like three people. And it was just, you know, a few people just singing to each other and that was it. And then it started catching on nicely. Uh, and now it's up to 17,000 people and people are posting songs every day, hundreds of songs a day. It's insane. It's awesome. It's a fantastic group. It's negativity free. It's commercial free. Uh, you know, we, we try to keep everything positive and, and fun. And some people are, you know, like, you know, like, you know, amateur karaoke singers, you know, sound like you'd, you'd expect people to sing at a karaoke bar after three beers. And it's fantastic. It is so much fun. And then it ranges for people who are like, like really should be famous. Like with just such incredible talent that people have never heard before that don't sing in public that, you know, just sing with their windows rolled up or, you know, in, in their house or in the shower and just quietly nobody's ever heard them. And then they are singing on our group and they're ridiculous, just amazingly talented people. Uh, so it's a it's a fantastic group. And we actually turned it into a podcast uh, called the Friday Night Karaoke Podcast. Uh, and it's uh, it's taken off nicely. We have an amazing uh, base of listeners and. Uh, it's up there in the charts and it's, uh, it's doing really well. It's so much fun. We did probably, I don't know, 60 something episodes now. Uh, so it's, a uh, it's a lot of fun. So I love, I love doing it. That's, love. that's absolutely amazing. And we're both in branding. We're both in marketing mm -hmm. and I'm hearing more and more of these little grassroots movements, starting with like, eh, I kind of wanted to see this thing in the world. Uh, this particular show, feel good fathers. Uh, if you're, you know, for listening to this feel good fatherhood show is about there was something in the world that I wanted to see. I didn't, you know, it didn't exist. And so right. I kind of built it. You had this Friday night karaoke. Um, since we're both in that industry, um, what do you think about this sort of like modern take on uh, these kind of like grassroots groups and grassroots, uh, I don't know, activities kind of uh, from the online space? I love it. I love it. I mean, I'm biased. I'm in it, right? But I, but I love it. It's, fan it's such a smart idea because if you're doing something and you're good at it and you, and, and you say, all right, we're just going to do, say, you know, um, a show around it, a podcast around it, or we're going to do a TV show around it. But you don't have any community around it. You know, it's hard to build that base. Uh, one of the main reasons why the Friday Night Karaoke podcast itself is doing so well is because we have this fantastic base of people who we feature each week on the show. And everybody listens for themselves. That, oh, I, oh, I'm featured this week and I'm going to share this with everybody on my own Facebook group and my Instagram and everything that they're doing. So we get all these people who are sort of, uh, you know, featured on the show and then they become the stars of that. They're, they're, their song is on this show and, and it, it builds this community around it and it just, and they're sharing it with their friends and their friends are joining and it's, it's this really cool group. And if, if you have something that you're doing that you can build a community around, I highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. That's, uh, I, I think it takes such a tremendous amount of courage. You know, I think of karaoke folks, you know, you're in, you got the liquid courage going on. You're, <laughs> you're in the bar, you're, you're singing. That's situation one. Situation two being, wow, now it's going to be on the internet forever. As long as podcasts are a thing, anybody could be listening. That, that's a different level of courage. 
Is there any, any sort of insight into walking people through that? Or is it just, does it just kind of occur naturally because of the, the guests that you have on the show? It is, it is a, a major difference. And that hit, that reality hit me a long time ago, uh, that if I'm in a bar and I had, you know, three shots of whiskey, right. And I'll get up there and sing anything. <laughs> right. And, and most people won't remember it at the end of the night and nobody's really sitting there taking videos and, you know, or if they are, it's like, you know, it, it's almost nothing, but then if you go onto our Facebook group and you post something, you know, it's there forever, right? Like, I mean, you can delete it, but it, it's on the internet, right? Like, and it takes a whole new level of, of, of courage, I guess, to do that. Uh, but it is kind of funny. We did uh, a, a week, of, what was it called? Like um, sort of, Oh damn! I'm blanking on the word. It was uh, it was it was like so so secret secret passions of 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 songs that like I would never sing in public, you know. And mm. it was like, oh yeah, like mine was like like Mariah Carey. Like I love Mariah. Like Mariah Carey. Like the people will never sing these things. They'll roll up the windows, you know, if their song comes on and sing it at the top of their lungs, you know, while they're driving. Mm. But they would never ever sing this in public. And then they'll sing it on uh on, on our on our facebook page in front of seventeen thousand people right so it's uh it, it was pretty cool and hundreds of people posted the songs that the guilty pleasures that was one of those, uh, that that they would never be quite dead singing or listening to in public you know and and they just blasted it loud for the entire community it was kind oh, of fun. i yeah. used to karaoke with my sister all the time madonna and i would never be caught singing madonna <laughs> there. we'll find those know. tapes <laughs> <laughs> This uh, this kind of brings something that we talk about a little bit on the show, yeah. this idea of we're in this new world, what you put online really is there forever. And just to kind of bring the energy down a little bit, have you given much consideration to how you want your kids to navigate this world where, um, or how you're raising them, what you're kind of teaching them? I think your, 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 your kids are a little bit older. They're kind of uh, at least post high school. Like, are you talking to them anything about the, the, the state of the internet, the state of social media at all right now? Well, I've, I've got a 17 year old and an 11 year old. Uh, so my, my son is just finishing up high school. He's just entered his senior year. So, uh, and yes, we've spoken about this plenty of times about the shit that you can put online and then it's there forever to ruin your life for the rest of your life. Uh, and we've definitely had plenty of conversations about that because it's so easy to be you know just a silly teenager right and be like oh look at me doing something stupid on the internet right and then like in 10 years when you know you go to apply for a job or something like that and someone goes uh is this you you know and you're like Shit. you know even though you were 14 or whatever it is you know you still said or did or you know did some stupid shit then you just don't want to you want to be careful about that you always have to be careful about it. thank you God, there was none of this shit when I was a kid. Honestly, I, I, I would be gone. I'd be in a gutter somewhere. There's no way I would. I, I can't imagine anyone uh, like our age, like of all the shit that I did and hung out with these you know, people and like friends and the, we all did stupid shit. And man, thank God there was no Facebook. I, I really feel bad for the kids today that have this stuff just constantly, constantly in their face from both directions, whether they're recording it or friends are recording it. And you're saying something, you're doing something, you're at a party, you're goofing around, and then it's there forever, right? It's it's challenging thing, you know. It, it's a rough one, you know. I I, I highly advise, I, I always advise my kids like just be careful what you're saying, what you're doing uh, in front of people, especially when people are have their cameras out and their phones out. It's it's really a a challenge. Hundred percent, and I and I definitely think I I take the stance of having my daughters reflect on, well, what would your future self want? Mm -hmm. You know, are you acting in a way um, that's going to be attracted to you and in, into the future? You know, right. I'm, I'm less, I'm less concerned with, you know, attracted to a potential mate or attracted to your friends or that kind of stuff. But is what you're, you know, are you, are you proud of yourself right now? Like, will your future yeah. self be proud of you here? Um, and, and really kind of paying attention to that. Agreed. Um, so and thank God, I thank God, honestly, I'm, I'm blessed with two amazing kids who, uh, you know, they have their moments, but they're not like, you know, I, I, I don't worry about them doing lots of stupid stuff and putting it on the internet. You know, I, they're, they're fantastic. So, uh, knock on wood, they will stay like that, you know? So, so that, that's going to be a result of the way that you brought them up and what values you instilled in them. Can you walk us through what you told them, how you raised them and why, why you feel as comfortable as you do just kind of with that trust and sort of that, Hey, you're, you're kind of like, Hey, you got some agency now go, go run with it. Yeah. I mean, my wife and I have just 
been on our kids just to, to work hard, do good things. Don't be an idiot. You know, uh, don't put yourself in, 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 in a stupid position, uh, you know, get, you know, as good a grades as you can in school, you know, but, uh, you know, work hard. Uh, and, and, you know, it worked. Yes. Easier said than done sometimes, you know, depending on your kids, you know, like, uh, you know, every kid's got their own issues. I mean, everybody's got their own issues, right? Like, and, uh, you know, some might be more challenging to parents than others. So I, I, it's hard to say, you know, well, well I did it, you could do it. Right. It's hard. So it's hard to, it's hard to compare that, but, uh, you know, we, we just didn't tolerate bullshit and all kids will try bullshit. If you let them do it, they'll, they'll, they'll keep doing it. Right. So we didn't tolerate the bullshit. Uh, we we're not like, you know, strict a-hole parents or anything, but I think our kids love us, but you know, we just said, all right, you know, do the right thing here. You know, just make good decisions, be smart, don't be stupid, you know? And I, I guess they listened to some of that. And <laughs> the, the, the parents think they're very respectable and, uh, you know, they, they, you, you know, are, are respectful to other people, Mr. And Mrs. And they say, please. And thank yous. They got their manners. And, uh, you know, they may, you know, try to beat each other up in the back of our car when we're driving somewhere, but if they don't do that when they're in other people's cars and they try to do the right thing and, and be respectful, you know? So it's, uh, it, it, I guess what we did worked, you know, so far. So it sounds, sounds very standard sibling to me. Uh, one of the things that we know is that our kids are parrot machines, right? They, they model themselves after us. They build their pathways. They organize their life around what they're kind of seeing. And so I'd love to have you sort of walk through with mm -hmm. us what you're up to um, as far as like the professional world. And then we can kind of drive that into some other elements about like what's happening in the house. It's a, so that's, that's a, that's a tougher one, right? For me, I think as a, uh, you know, I, I've been on stage doing conferences. I throw parties. So, you know, I, I like whiskey, you know, and I tend to use a lot of four letter words. So, uh, I, some of it is, is me saying, all right, you know, do what I say, not what I do, you know, to my kids, you know? So, uh, but you know, my daughter has been very good. She doesn't like cursing. She's, she understands it. You know, she, she won't do it in the house. My son's been, even at, as a 17 year old boy, you know, his, his, his cursing is minimal in front of us anyway, you know, I'm, I'm sure with his friends, he, lets out a few other choice words, but it, you know, around the house, like everybody's respectful. Uh, and, but the thing that we also try to instill beyond that is, you know, the hard work is, is getting things done, doing a good job, uh, you know, being, having self-respect, uh, you know, if you don't have self-respect, people aren't going to respect you, you know, so we teach them all those things, you know, uh, you know, you're dressed you, like you want to impress and work hard and, and get things done and, you know, make sure that you're proud of what you're doing. And, and at the end of the day, when you look at your stuff, are you proud of it? You know, cause if you think it sucks, I'm sure everyone else thinks it sucks too. So just hmm. do a great job, you know? Uh, and that's, I think what we try to, what we try to push. There's two, two elements in there that I'd love to dig into a little bit more. Yeah. What, what, what was it that you did to highlight the self-respect? And then number two, um, the dressing to impress, and if you're proud of it, other people will be proud as well. That's sort of discernment, right? Develop, you know, developing an eye for quality. Uh, so number one, you know, what did you, what did you talk about with regards to self-respect? Feel good fathers want to know this. Um, that is a critical skill. I think that confidence, that self-respect, um, boundaries come from that, uh, healthy relationships, healthy interactions with other people. That's all going to come from your self-respect. And then we can talk about the sermon after that. Sure. So, uh, so our kids are swimmers, uh, and they're actually really great swimmers and, and fast. And they love the aspect of winning or at least trying to win, uh, you know, the races. And, you know, I think part of that in, in practice is, you know, you got to work hard, you got to work for it, right? You can't just show up and then expect to win. You can't skip all the practice and expect to win, you know? So, uh, so our kids practice quite a bit like that. Uh, I think that that has been a big driver in getting them to want to achieve more. Cause they look, everybody likes taking home a, a gold medal, right? Everybody wants that. And, and once you get the taste of that once, and then you're like, all right, now I'm in sixth place, you know, it's less exciting. Right. So I think, I think sports like that does certainly have, uh, uh, a help to it. You know, uh, we encourage our son to do 
what he loves doing. Uh, and that is, he likes engines. He likes building things. He's always been an engineer. Uh, you know, so right now he's, you know, tinkering in the garage with his quad and pulling to get, pulling the transmission off of one engine and trying to put it on another engine. And, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes he breaks shit and, you know, but like, you know, and I guarantee you every single one of my tools is going to be in the wrong spot. You know, when I go in there later, but we encourage him to, to work on things and to do something good and build something that he's proud of. Uh, so I think that's a, that's another big part of it is that, uh, you know, our daughter is, is fantastic in school. She loves getting A's. Uh, she hates anything else, you know, and, uh, you know, my son is less picky about A's, but, uh, you know, it's, my daughter loves getting A straight A's in school. And, and when she doesn't, it's like, all right, so what did you do differently in this class? Well, how can you improve that? And, and she, you know, takes it to heart and tries to improve herself. And there she is right now. Welcome to the show. Shirt, by the way, <laughs> good stuff. Um, but that's, I think that's fantastic. And so some of the things that I heard there were you're placing your attention on sort of their interests and really being attuned to what they're doing. And I think that for a feel good father, that simply using that uh, ability to see and place your attention on your children and learn of them, be curious about what they like. That's, I mean, that's just one of our foundational principles here. Um, and that's kind of like the really kind of step one when it comes to what what are the components of a feel good father. So I absolutely love that. Um, now, when it comes to the discernment, I, I kind of understand it for, as you're from your example about how the grades work because there's a measurement there. But uh, you know, especially when it comes to uh, you know engineering or you know mechanical work or whatever the other sort of hobbies are of your daughter. How are you building this discernment? How are you building this quality uh, in in your kids? I think we just encourage them to do what they love and and to be good at it. Uh, my daughter's got many interests. You know, she she did drama this year. She's doing trumpet. She's doing uh, field hockey. You know, so she's doing a bunch of other things, which is great. And you know, if she doesn't love it, you know, we don't we don't push it hard. But if she loves it, we encourage her to do great at it. And uh, and I think that's, I think that's the key, right? So my son's doing welding, you know, uh, you know, he's 17. He's sitting there welding stuff. You know, I love it. I, it makes me so happy to see him building things and he loves machining and doing all the things. And, and, you know, so I, I want to push him to do the things that he likes and then take those things and then do it really well mm. and be good at it. And eventually, hopefully, you know, they'll make money in their interests and do things that they can make money. They like buying things and having, exp he wants expensive toys, right? You got to make money, right? Like, so do really good at what you're doing. Be great at it. So that way you can make money at it. I think that's a, also an important life lesson, right? Because sometimes it's, it's like, okay, I'm good at this, but I'm not good at it to make money or I'm just, it's just sort of a hobby. Well, if you love it, you know, don't, don't get a job as an accountant and then try to make that your career and then try to do this and stuff. see if you can do this so well that you can charge for it and then make some money. So I think that's an important thing as well. Absolutely love it. You know, I'm, I'm a really big fan of Dan Sullivan. I uh, just finished uh, 10X is easier than 2X. Mm -hmm. And one of the core elements there that he talks about is that what you're, what you're really good at, what your unique skill is, is what you're working on. It's what you're actively working on. Right. So I think that in, um, in that way, like encouraging them to figure out their passions and encouraging them to develop that skill mm -hmm. uh, towards mastery, like wonderful, wonderful right. lessons. Um, Let's see. So you've got a lot going on. Um, love what we talked about so far. Let's talk about how you're sort of balancing the various initiatives that you're doing. You have a podcast, you're a CMO of a company, you're also an investor, you're traveling around to conferences, you like putting on parties, you love whiskey, um, <laughs> and you have these kids that you're hanging out with and, and paying attention to them. So I'd love to hear about sort of how you're balancing that and and maybe what 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 tools you're using to to make that work on your calendar? Yeah, sure. So some of that does ha overlap Venn diagram style, like like the whiskey overlaps with say the parties, right? Which is which is convenient for me. Uh, but in general, uh, a lot of my stuff has a bit of an overlap. So uh, I've been doing the investing for uh, 15, fourteen years now. We started our fund in New York, and we've been investing in early stage tech companies, uh, and that uh, kind of overlapped with a lot of the. Uh, parties that I threw in, and investor conferences that I threw, which was in that investing and entrepreneur space. So I try to do things that uh, tend to overlap with each other. So for instance, right now, uh, the, uh, the the karaoke, the podcast, 
uh, overlaps with uh, my CMO job, which is promoting podcasts for a living. Right, so it's I'm CMO of Mopod. We're the largest driver of uh, engaged listeners to some of the biggest podcasts out there, uh, and uh, and and some small podcasts as well. We you know some, a lot of upstart podcasts. Uh, we have a, a cool self serve tool, and uh, so we have some just really some cool ad uh, techniques uh, for podcasters. Right, so that's that's our goal is to grow podcasts, and that overlaps with the karaoke podcast. You know, we test all of our ads and run all of our ads to our own podcast before we sell it to customers. We want to make sure it works. So, and we've blown a lot of money trying to advertise our podcast and all sorts of different methods that just didn't work. Uh, and finally, we found a bunch of things that do work. We repeat it. We'd make sure it works really well. And we still use them today to advertise our podcast. And we also, uh, you know, use that for our customers as well. So there's definitely a lot of overlap uh, in what I do. And I think that, uh, I think that's important. You know, uh, if I was doing some stuff that's like just completely different, it would be more time consuming maybe. Right. Like, so, uh, this, this enables me and, and not everything overlaps perfectly, you know, but, uh, I think doing things like this help me manage my time better. Right. Cause a lot of the stuff that I do is it's the same thought process for, for multiple different things, you know? What I, what I really enjoy is in, in marketing world, especially when we're getting into uh, paid media buys, mm -hmm. the expression is feed your stallions and starve your ponies. So what that means is that in general, when you're placing an ad, and, and I know this is going to be super basic for you, but for the feel-good father, it might be new, Sure, right? You, you can do one ad, one copy, one image, one video won everything and and that's that's sort of like gambling it's like putting all your all your money on a number right or you can create some split tests you can create some a b tests in there so mm -hmm. a couple of different kinds of copy a couple of different kinds of images a couple of different kinds of videos and kind of see which one's working well um and then in that world you're looking for the stallion you're looking to, you're looking for the runaway engagement or the sure. runaway click-through rate that's a ctr uh your your runaway engagement uh the shares the virality there's this yeah. There's this huge ad going around on Twitter right now that's kind of really getting a lot of it's it's kind of grown this one business uh, in the past month or so, um, which is which is fascinating to kind of read about because it's one sentence, it's a one sentence Twitter ad, and it's blown up this business and it's been um, quite amazing, and it's like a you think such and such result came from this, but actually it came it came because. I'm subscribed to this newsletter and my, and my boss doesn't know about it. It's, it's right. something like that. A simple line like my that. My boss thinks I'm a genius. Right. Yes. Yep. That's it. That's the, that's the one. And um, what I think is phenomenal here, because we were talking off air about, you know, what are your values? What's your family motto? Mm -hmm. But just listening to you kind of to talk about your family, what I'm hearing is that like your whole philosophy is like feed your stallions and starve your ponies. It, so it, interesting overlap there, by the way. So, uh, you know, the, the family for us is most important, you know, uh, it is my favorite and most important job is being a husband, father, uh, and doing that well, you know, uh, everything else drives that, you know, my, my motivation is that. Right. So if I had no motivation, but I still work hard, I guess I'd, you know, I'd still be doing things, but I wouldn't give a shit as much. Right. As like, as everything that I do when I'm working hard is for that. So mm -hmm. I think that's important. And, and as far as AB testing, totally recommend it you know, <laughs> for, for anything you're doing in marketing. Uh, you know, always try out a few different ads and see what sticks. Uh, Cause it is the, it is very important. Uh, even in our stuff, we we run we have a uh, you know ABCD testing uh, of a lot of our ad copy, and some shit works great, some of it doesn't. You know, so it's a uh, it, it's and then you back the winner. So that's definitely a, a you know a, 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 an important approach, I would say. You've got you've got this family first mentality. Absolutely love it. Um, you talked a little bit about the motivation. How do you keep yourself in check to make sure that that is what you're facing? Poof, good question. Uh, I don't know. Um, look, I mean, if, if I if I see my kids and they're all happy and my wife's happy and everybody's smiling, we can 
you know, at, at, we have crazy schedules, but if we can several times a week to all sit down at dinner and chat it up and everybody talks about their day. And if, if everybody seems to be happy, then I think I'm doing the right thing. Uh, you know, if, if all of a sudden I would say that that changes and something's no longer, you know, a, as good as it could be, I'd, I'd feel like I'd have to fix something like what, like what happened, you know? So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I see my kids and they, they're smiling, they're happy to see me and, you know, I, I, I then great. You know, if, if they're not happy to see me, I'm going to start to wonder what's wrong. You know, absolutely love it. One of the, um, Adeline, Adam Lane Smith, uh, released a couple of weeks ago, I had him on and he was talking about how, uh, attachment theory, and he was talking about, especially for fathers of younger children that you can tell that they're healthy by whether they're playing. So if they're playing, if they're exploring, if they're trying new things, it's good. They feel right. comfortable. They feel safe. They feel secure. They feel loved. Yeah. Um, and, and so it's, it's interesting hearing your kind of reflection of that for your older fan, like for your older kids. Yeah. Um, I have no cool named theories to, to spit out right now, sadly, but, uh, but I think that's definitely on track. You know, I think my kids are out there, they're running around, they're, they go outside, they play, they do the thing, they're building stuff, they're making things. And, you know, I, that's what you want, you know, uh, it's incredibly important that they're out there trying to figure things out and explore and have a good time and, and do their own thing. Uh, but still come back home at the end of the day and, you know, want to spend time with the family and, you know, have dinner and things like that. It's, they're not like, all right, I'm out of here. Don't, don't call, you know, I'm not going to come home. You know, uh, they're not like that, which is, which is also, I think very important. Yes. hundred percent. You know, if they want to spend time with you, that's the generational element, right? That's the, uh, you've done good work. So, um, one of the things about, uh, having this community for feel good fathers is mm -hmm. that it's a show, it's a podcast. Yeah. Um, and I know, I know for a fact that a, a good number of listeners actually have a podcast. And so I would love if you have a handful of things, like just from your experience without giving away the juice, mm -hmm. the secret sauce, just what are some things that, that are important that you see about this medium? So, oh man, good question. I would say having an audience that wants to hear what you have to say is important, right? So sometimes you want to say stuff and, and you know, maybe nobody cares. I would say, if you're looking to seriously build your podcast, think about the things that you one are passionate about, but two other people want to hear, uh, you know, whether that's, whether it's funny, whether it's business, whether it's, uh, you know, entertainment, whether, you know, depending on whatever it is, just relate to your audience and then have people, especially if you're starting out, give you feedback, be like, all right, I need some honest feedback. You know, did you like it? Did you hate it? Uh, I won't think anything bad of you. I just need, I need some honest feedback here. You know, what are your thoughts and get people to listen to it. And then, uh, and then see what you did, right. See what you did wrong. You know, uh, is your, is your podcast loaded with ums and uhs, right? Like, are you, are, does the audio quality suck? Right. Like, like figure that out and make it good. Make it listenable, make it interesting and entertaining. I think that's uh, important right there. Uh, if you can build some sort of community around it, I mean, we started this you know, show with community, right? I think that's incredibly important as well. Uh, having, uh, you know, uh, feel good fatherhood, right? Is there a community around this, right? It, it, it's the father community, right? Like, so there's certainly plenty to choose from and plenty of, of people that you can bring into this community and, and get people to talk to each other. And right? there's more, there's always more that you can do on the community side. And I'm not saying you specifically, but it's like, even me, there's more that, that we could all do on the community side around what you're doing, is, is even when it comes to your podcast. I think those are very important facts. Uh, and then marketing it, you know, yeah, we do this for a living, but when you're first starting out, you shouldn't be spending too much money uh, you know, trying to market it before you have a, a, a basic organic following where you've perfected what you're doing. I mean, it's never gonna be perfect, but where you've gotten great at what you're doing, you know what people wanna hear, you're doing it well. Uh, and if you're just doing it as a hobby forever, then great and enjoy it. If you want to eventually take that to the next level and do this as a business, like there's plenty of money to be made out there. It's not easy to do. It's not like, oh, I make a podcast and then I make a million dollars and I read an ad for soap, right? Like it's not so simple, but it can be done and a lot of people are doing it. So if you do have a podcast and it's starting to gain a good following and you're starting to make money on it or you're considering making money on it, 
take a look into it. Spend the time, do a little research and see if it's, if it's right for you. You know, I, I, I certainly recommend it. It's a growing from, industry. From, uh, from my experience in the personal branding space, mm -hmm. we, uh, so really with individuals, they have some sort of message, they have some sort of impact that they want to make in the world. They have some sort of, some sort of change that they want to see change makers, so to yeah. speak. The podcast is a community building awareness, usually for a product or service on the other side. Uh, you know, I work with a lot of keynote speakers, mm -hmm. you know, so they're on there with their podcast, putting their thought leadership out there. Uh, keynotes podcasts that work very well, mm -hmm. although it tends to be that a lot of very successful keynote speakers don't have time and they don't want to do the podcast. Right. Um, although I can think of a handful of notable exceptions. Um, a lot of coaches, um, a lot of the, these individuals that have these little businesses and, and courses and coaching programs, mm -hmm. that kind of jazz, um, that they want to build to uh, using their podcast to build that community front end. Right. Your space, your big expertise is in a different area. It's in this, this B2B. Um, as, as somebody who, as we're kind of growing and we have more, uh, we call them trainers. So Keynote goes into a business, offers product service coaching workshops on the back end. Mm -hmm. Um, or the other alternative, which is having a podcast simply and directly to grow your business, what would you say um, would be sort of the core differences between the two? So a podcast can be used for a few things, right? Like, like you said, you mentioned a few of them right there. So some of them are as a lead generator, right? Where you, are, where you have a business, you're, you, you fix cars, right? And then your podcast is about car repair. Right. Then, and, and at the end you go, Oh, by the way, I fix cars. I'm at one, two, three Smith street, right? Uh, we fix, uh, transmissions and blah, blah, blah. Right. So you can, a lot of people do that as a lead generator. So if you go online you'll see companies that, uh, you know, like fix things or do things or build things. And their goal is not necessarily to run ads in there. Uh, you know, read that soap ad or whatever it is, but it's to generate leads for the business. And, and no matter what that is, whether you're a, a keynote speaker or whether you are uh, anything, right? Uh, and, but you're bringing people in as a lead generator. Uh, some pop, sometimes people just use it as, as a marketing tool as well. So, so lead generator marketer, like if you have an Instagram channel, right? You're not looking to make millions of dollars on Insta by being a celebrity, right? Like you are using that as, as a showpiece, as sort of a lead generator for your business. I, I, it's a law firm and we have an Instagram channel. You know, uh, it's how exciting can that possibly be? Not, not overly exciting compared to other things that are on Instagram, but it, it's informational and it's interesting. And when people look you up and they go, all right, what kind of law is, uh, I need a lawyer. And they, they, they search on different things. You're there and you're giving some advice and you're giving some uh, interesting tidbits and, and it leads back to your firm, right? So there's, there's lots of people who use uh, you know, social media and uh, including podcasts as, a, as another arm almost of social media as a lead generating channel. And then there's people who do it as a business, right? Some people use Instagram as their actual business, right? They, they make money by using Instagram only on Instagram as an Instagram celebrity of, you know, right, of some sort, right? And then there's people who do the same thing for podcasts, people who have just have podcasts that generate money and that's all they do. They, they, they speak for a living you know, into a microphone in a screen, they, they post it on various channels, whether it's video podcast, whether it's just an audio only podcast, and then they make money by selling advertising in that podcast. So there's definitely a few different uh, approaches uh, to, to, to why you would make a podcast. And some people just, you know, again, hobbyists, right? Like it's just me and my friend, we're talking about blah, 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 right? Whatever it is. And, uh, you know, I just love, I love dogs and we just chat about dogs. And so, so there's people who just do it for, so there's people who do it for a few different reasons. So I would say figure out what reason you want to do this for. If you've got a firm of some sort of, you know, maybe use it as a lead gen, if you've got if you just like, I'm so freaking interesting and I got funny stuff and people will pay me to read their ads, then do it, then, then try to make money that way. You know, there's definitely different ways to, to do this. Absolutely love it. And if you happen to be somebody in the personal branding space, you happen to be maybe responsible for this lead generation or you're responsible for uh, some sort of sales capacity or having your face out there. Uh, if you're a salesperson, very, very common for having a personal brand, uh, you can find out more information by. Uh, in the description, clicking on the free brand call bit.ly link. Uh, that's the bit.ly uh, free brand call. Uh, you'll know my face will be there. Um, we can help you through discover some of those elements. Joe, you mentioned something super great about the relating to your audience. Mm -hmm. And so 
you've got this karaoke thing, you've built this huge like 17,000 person Facebook group, you have this listenership and marketing specifically is all about finding where people are. It's about mm -hmm. finding that avatar, finding that audience for what you're creating. Our context is, is your podcast. Any context for, for pay, doing a paid advertising is for whatever, whatever offer service thing that is that you wanna do as you're trying to find a new person to engage with your product or service. Can you, do you have any sort of insight into where or what somebody that is thinking about doing paid advertising or starting out, whichever version you want to go with, how they could figure out who their audience is? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question by the way, because you'd think, all right, well, if I'm just starting out, I got to figure this out. Right. And then, but if you're a big company, you already know all this information, right? So we actually have had quite a few customers that are you know, pretty, pretty decent sized customers that tell us, all right, here's our audience, please advertise towards that specifically or that mostly, right? And, and let's see if we could pick up anything else. So, uh, and then we look at the stats afterward and then we say, by the way, do you know that there's a decent chunk of your audience that is in this demographic or this area or this age group or whatever it is? And they're like, really? You know, and uh, it's, so it is often surprising, even to big, well-established brands who's tuning in and listening to some of their stuff. They have a general idea, but they, they, we often throw surprises their direction and say, by the way, check this out. By the way, you may want to, you know, in some of your other marketing and, you know, I know you're doing Facebook ads as well and whatever it is for your business. You may want to take a look at this demographic. They seem to be mm -hmm. tuning in, you know, so we've definitely given advice to that. However, you know. You, you should take a look and, and at least figure out who you're talking to, who's listening at first, even when you're starting out. So karaoke, all right, that, that's a pretty easy one, right? Anybody who's liking music and, you know, wants to sing on stage and do things. And we have people from, from drama and people that do Broadway and people that play the guitar and, and sing on stage as a, as a solo act and people that just want to get out there. We have people who run karaoke, people just who, who like to just drink. You know, we have, we have all sorts of people who, you know, that sort of mix into this melting pot of of people who enjoy the karaoke site. And we can see who they are in the community, which is nice because Facebook also gives you, you know, a little bit of demographic breakdown. You can see uh, what's going on. And we've got all walks of life, all walks of life. It's, it's a bit of a variety there, you know, uh, it, pick, pick a demographic. It's probably in there, you know, it, and it's interesting seeing this and, and you'd think, all right, well, this, that, that's pretty broad. Right. But the other thing is that everybody likes one thing and that's the, the, the music aspect of it. Right. So whether you're from one part of the country or another, or one leaning political ideology or another, we just have the same people, the, all these people mixed up in this group all around music and everybody, by the way, like clicking like on other people's profiles, right? That people that may not have generally been friends in the real world or, 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 you know, or may you know, not have the same, you know, stances, leanings or whatever it is, right? In, in, in the real, all of a sudden are supporting each other in this community and clicking light and saying, great job on that song. And like all circling around the music aspect of this. And it's, it's very cool to see. One of the, I would say, principles of another, another we talked about a lot of principles of feel good fathers uh, on the show, but another one is about something called relational masculinity. Mm -hmm. And so we say that uh, for a feel good father, becoming a father isn't taking away from other things in your life. It's simply, let's say that you were at a hundred percent and that's kind of like you're at a hundred points of whatever it was mm -hmm. with your identity that being a father, you're adding another uh, 120. Mm -hmm. Your capacity is increasing because it has to, your capacity has to increase when you have kids as you're raising them. Um, but what I love here about your example is that in this world, it's far more about how you can have an affinity with somebody, meaning how you can share uh, something common, how you can share and promote or congratulate somebody for a job well done, that building that relationship, even in the virtual environment over common ground is sort of the driver of these great communities. And so as a feel good father, it really is about finding, finding what it is that you love, find, finding what it is that you have in common with your neighbor, you know, and building those relationships so that your kids can see you do it as, as part of your model and everything that you've been talking about from the conferences, the partying, the whiskey, the karaoke, all that kind of jazz, it's all related specifically 
to you building these great relationships with other people. Mm. And I think that's really commendable and um, absolutely love that you shared that so much on here. Joe, if folks want to figure out more about you, they want to learn more about you, they have a podcast, they want to get some business, they want to grow their audience smashingly because you're amazing and your business is amazing, where can they find out more about that? Sure. So uh, mopod.com, M-O-W-P-O-D.com uh, is our podcast growth uh, agency and ad tech platform. Uh, and if you like singing, Friday night karaoke, check that out uh, wherever you listen to podcasts, Apple, Spotify, anything like that. Uh, or uh, also go to Facebook and look for the groups and look for the Friday night karaoke Facebook group and click join. And, you know, we'd love to have you there. Uh, can I just add one thing to just one thing that you just said a minute ago, though, before I before we finish up? Sorry. Uh, you mentioned that, you know, you, you were at 100 percent before and then you have kids. Now you're at like 120 percent. I I think the math is a slightly different. I feel like you weren't at a hundred percent before you just didn't know your capacity, right? You thought you were, but you weren't right. Because, uh, I think that all of a sudden you had kids and you're like, wow, I do have this whole other aspect of my life that I never even thought of for the past 20, 30 years, whatever it is before you had kids. Right. And now it's like, wow, that's, that's a lot bigger. Like I did have that capacity to hold more. I just thought I was full because I was young and didn't realize it. So I wanted to just change some of that math there. Absolutely love it. And uh, thanks for the correction. I will adjust. I mean, to I will adjust what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I love the framework and, and uh, definitely the, the royalty checks from this will, will yeah, go sure. to you directly, Joe. It's really evoking for me, David Goggins, when he says, when you're exhausted, when you can't go anymore, when you've put everything you can physically into it and your body is screaming at you to stop, you're at 60%. There's another 40% of your fuel in the tank and you can't keep going. Right. Right. So absolutely love it. Uh, Joe Rubin, everybody. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jay. Uh, by the way, can people subscribe to your podcast? How do they do it? They press the subscribe button of some sort. How does that work? That's a great question. So that's going to be right above your head. Uh, it's going to say subscribe, but then also YouTube has decided right about here that this is the next video you should be watching. And uh, it's going to be one of mine. I, I Actually, I really hope it is. YouTube sometimes plays a trick on me, but today it's going to be one of mine. So click on that one for more Feel Good Fatherhood. Awesome, man. Dude, thank you so much for having me as a guest. I really appreciate being on here. This was a lot of fun. Thank you.